Michael Patrick Shields is on the air. Good morning, world. Good morning, Michigan. A very pleasant Wednesday to you. Michael Patrick Shields. Nobody won the Mega Millions jackpot last night, so Friday's drawing 304 million big ones, and let's hope they stay right here in the state of Michigan. It's a Wildcat Wednesday, brought to you by Northern Michigan University, located in the spectacular Upper Peninsula, a dynamic four-year public co-educational university with a population of nearly 9,400 undergraduate and graduate students. And while we're talking about population this morning, that's the big story. Detroit's population now at its lowest level since 1910. The latest census figures show Detroit's population is just over 713,000 people. That's down 25% in the past decade, 25%. Grand Rapids down 5% over the last decade. According to the Census Bureau, uh, Michigan's second largest city lost about 10,000 people. The population now 188,000. And 40. The biggest cities in the state of Michigan right now Detroit, Grand Rapids, Warren, Sterling Heights, and then Lansing, which actually gained population. And Mayor uh, Verge Bonero issued a statement that says even amidst the toughest economy in generations, there's no doubt we're on the right track creating jobs over the last five years. And uh, so La Lansing's population actually crept up a touch. Now, the uh, decline of population in Detroit is going to have a big impact on the two congressional districts that cover part of the city. Michigan as a whole is going to lose a congressional seat when they redraw all the lines based on the population. The two biggest congressional districts are Congresswoman Candace Miller, the 10th district there on the east side of Detroit, 719,000 residents, and Congressman Mike Rogers, who will join us later in the program. His district has 707,000 uh, that includes the city of Lansing, Brighton, Howell, places like that. Those uh, districts are going to have to be redrawn, as we understand it, to bring their numbers down. They're just simply too big. Now, um, Gary Austin is our anchor man here. He's going to give us the news in just a couple of seconds. But w one of the things that I found interesting, and in this is, comes from MERS News, is that if the election for governor were to be held today, what? Verge Bernero oh. leads Rick Snyder by 2%. Well, how about that? In a head to head poll between well, the two candidates. Huh. Well, I'll what do you make you. of that? <laughs> I don't know. I think there's a. I, I think um, Governor Snyder is got, getting a lot of bad media play because of all this protest business. And if Democrats were trying to work this in such a way where they were trying to chip away at Governor Snyder's relative high approval rating over the past several months, I would say it is working. I think most voters are really taking um, a wait-and-see approach to see how this shakes well, out. Well, if the poll were today, if the election yeah. were today, right, right this Bernero moment. would be up by two percentage hmm. points because well, uh, people are, are decided, I guess, they don't like what they what Rick Snyder's up to, but he told them everything was on the table, which yep. is, the, you know, the surprise, but I guess that's how it goes in politics. Well, you know, it, it's true, and, and Rick Snyder's made it clear all along here, ever since he Ever since he assumed his new job, he is unfazed at what's going on. He well, says it. He says he he says he expects it. You know, <clears throat> as far as these protesters, he says he 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 knew it was coming, but he says he's staying the course. Well, let me tell you what, uh, State Representative uh, from uh, Traverse City, the Republican, was in with us yesterday, <clears throat> Wayne Schmidt, and he said clearly. Rick Snyder doesn't give a hoot about being reelected. He's doing what he thinks is right yeah. in Michigan. So that's interesting. We're yeah. It's almost like a test case to see how it would work to have a businessman run government who doesn't care about getting reelected. Well, so you know, he said, he said right out of the gate, I am not a politician. And he, 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 he wasn't then, and he sure isn't now. We are in our American Metal Roofs studio this morning, and your news is brought to us by... Our friends at American Metal Roofs never, ever have to worry about the weather again with a beautiful, guaranteed American Metal Roof. Learn more at AmericanMetalRoofs.com, AmericanMetalRoofs.com. And, Michael Patrick, what is going on with this weather? We were getting so accustomed to things warming up a little bit not that long ago. But look what's going on. The National Weather Service, a winter storm warning in effect across parts of our state. For example, a mix of sleet and freezing rain. Expected to really come down north of Grand Rapids today. Expected to get hard hit. More than six inches of snow possible from Ludington to Mount Pleasant. Holy cow, Consumers Energy crews, they are ready just in case we have a bunch of power line problems. And, boy, <laughs> you know, you get a few warm days here this time of year, and you start forgetting about winter real quick. In fact, I have my... My snow shovel perched right next to my door, so I have to, you know, early in the morning, just in yeah. case, I have to shovel well, my way. I haven't put <clears> that away. 
So I may have to take that it's, out again. It's uh, pouring down rain right now here on the state yeah. capitol right uh, in front of our studio. And um, one of the we're going to talk to Jerry West. Fourteen times he was an NBA All-Star, mm. Gary, a little yes. bit later in the program. And he came out of West Virginia. And if you ever look at the NBA logo, if you can picture it, it's a it's a sort of elegant, a thin, tall man shooting oh, a basketball. Is that, is that that's Jerry? That's West. Jerry West. You know who? You know when I first saw that? You know who I thought of? I thought of Dave DeBusher. Did you really? Yes, I did. Well, I'm, I did. We're he not going to tell Jerry style. West that if you don't. Yeah, mind. <laughs> he he had that same style um, for you know, years playing Dave DeBusher with the Pistons, as we know. Well, Jerry West has you know, had an interesting life for sure. You know who's on the other end of our line yes. now? Another sports superstar, Ken mm-hmm. Delafour, who was with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, but played in the NFL for the Lions, the Steelers, the Chargers, and the, in the USFL for the Michigan Panthers. Came right out of the Detroit area. Good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Michael Patrick. Uh, the NFL made some rule changes yesterday. I was curious to get your thoughts on it. I don't know if you had a chance to look at these yet or not, but kickoffs are going to move from the 30-yard line to the 35-yard line. Any reaction? <clears throat> I think maybe Jason Hansen can stay in the league a little longer. He can still <laughs> kick it in the end zone. <laughs> Touchbacks are going to stay at the 20-yard line, but the kicking team is only going to be allowed a 5-yard running start instead of a 15-yard running start and i guess uh this is meant for safety is that why they it's pretty dangerous i guess when you can go flying down there like a human missile well you know it's interesting that they they would do that because the actual contact doesn't typically take place uh until about the 30 30 yards into the run so whether you start 15 yards back or five yards back um you're at full speed probably by 10 yards Mm. and none of the contact on those typically happens for at least 30 yards. So I don't think it changes m- much of that. Um, I-, I don't know how they thought about it, but uh, it would seem that uh, the emphasis is right, safety of the players, but uh, I don't think that changes much, much of the, any of it. The other thing I notice here is that now booth officials are going to confirm all questionable scoring plays, so uh, you-, you won't need to throw the red flag out there. I guess if it's close enough, they're going to have a look at it one way or another. Yeah, uh, the officials uh, had that that uh, opportunity at the what last two minutes of a half, and now uh, in this situation on a scoring, they can throw it any time. Which, uh, if it's questionable, it will save it will save the coaches from using up their timeouts and uh, the number of times they throw the red hanky. Yeah, you you always see guys rushing on the field to try to get the extra point in when they know it's a close call. But I guess the booth, the eye in the sky, will be watching. What's hey, do you your, think uh, that would have changed uh, the call last year in Chicago? Uh, actually, it, that worked against the Lions, didn't it, with Kelvin Johnson in game one? Yeah, that's right. That's right. The, the touchdown, no touchdown, the big debate that's it's still unsettled in, in most people's minds. And Let me ask you really quickly, because I know you're in touch with lots of players around the league. Uh, we heard yesterday that Matthew Stafford's looking pretty good. Uh, Jim Schwartz came out and said that he's going to start throwing the ball again. And uh, that's good news if we ever have a season. That is, but what sh- what buzz are you hearing about um, what's going on with the with the, the with the work stoppage? Uh, well, the work stoppage it, it's kind of now uh, it, it's kind of funny and a bit it's a bit posturing, right? Nobody's lost any money yet. The owners uh, haven't lost any revenue, and the players haven't missed a paycheck yet. So when when that starts to happen, that becomes real. I know it's disruptive to the draft and the off season workouts, but. Mm-hmm. Guys will continue working out, um, and everything will stay the course, the draft, et cetera. But um, so, so people start missing money, uh, that's when the real impacts come, and that's when the real actions will be taken. So um, right now I think it's just one of those things, and they, they just need to solve around some of the issues, the 18-game schedule. The players want the extra two game checks uh, in accordance with that, and mm-hmm. some of those issues are sort of uh, – on the table, and they'll, they'll, I, I think they'll, they'll get through it and work through it. Big game of chicken is what it sounds like. Thank you very much, Ken Dallafor, who played in the NFL now with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. Let's get a road report, Gary. You mentioned the weather was bad. One of our production assistants, Jordan McCarlton, comes into the American Metal Roof studio from uh, Ann Arbor every day. Jordan, where are you? What are the roads like? Well, I'm actually still in Ann Arbor, Michael Patrick. Um, I had a pretty rough start to the morning. Uh, I was leaving for the studio this morning at about 4:30. Uh, it was it was pretty uh, pretty benign to begin with, no problems. Uh, and then I got about five minutes into my uh, my trip, tried to make a pretty sharp right hand turn at Packard Road, and uh, slid about halfway across the road. So I, I I must have hit a pretty bad icy patch. 
uh, kind of scared me right back to my apartment here. Yeah, one of those black ice patches. Those are the absolute worst when you don't even see it coming, and it makes you feel absolutely powerless. So be careful yeah. this morning if you're driving. That's uh, Jordan McCarlton from the Ann Arbor area. We could get reports like that from any roads. I and mean, right now, as I look out the window here of our American Metal Roof studio, it's pouring down rain. But uh, depending on the temperature, wherever you are, that precipitation will be different. Gary Austin, thank you very much. You want to? You bet. Um, when we come back, yeah, um, we are going to talk with uh, Nancy Kane from AAA Michigan. There are some new laws to the teen driving, uh, new changes to the teen driving laws. Speaking of driving, and we'll go through what they are and what they mean to you and your kids uh, when you get back. So stay tuned for that. Also, we are going to talk with the State Senator Roger Kahn because. Children could buy guns, as we understand it. Can that be true? He's going to tell us when we get back. It's Michael Patrick Shields, and it's Wednesday. Well, it's morning, all right, and depending where you are in the state, you're getting some weather. We're getting uh, driving rain right now on the Capitol Dome here in the city of Lansing, where the population actually went up a little bit. Detroit way down, Grand, uh, Grand Rapids down a little bit. And uh, the, the, uh, be careful driving. If you have an opportunity to ring us in and let us know what road conditions are like, we heard already from Ann Arbor it was a little bit slippery and icy this morning, 888 900 9966 is the number to call. 888 900 9966. And uh, we're going to talk later in the program with Jerry West, the 14 time NBA All Star. And uh, Congressman Mike Rogers will join us too about the situation uh, in Libya. And also the fact that his district is one of the biggest in the state and is going to have to be redrawn because he's got too many people in that district. Now, listen up because your kids, if they're driving in cars, the laws are changing. Teenage driving laws are changing, and Nancy Kane, our good friend from AAA, is going to tell us what the changes are and when they take effect. Good morning to you, Nancy. Good morning, Michael Patrick. How are you? Have you had to do any driving this morning yet? Actually, yes, and you, I tell everyone be careful out there. It really is a wintry mix. It's a little bit slippery, wet, a little bit icy spot, so really slow down, watch your seat. Keep both hands on the wheel. All right. Thank you very much. Now, it's as if you're speaking to teenagers who have got their new car, and they're ready to go bombing around town, but the laws are going to change. When do they, first of all, will you go through the new teen driving laws one at a time? Okay, I'd be happy to. And, and Michael Patrick, they take effect on March 30th, that's Wednesday, just next week. Okay. And two key factors, passenger restrictions and nighttime driving restrictions. Mm -hmm. And as anyone knows with a new teenager, you need time behind the wheel, you know, in a supervised setting. And in the old days, kids would get in the car when they got their license and just head out. That was that. But now with the graduated driver's license, much safer. You, you spend time behind the wheel and you go through steps and you get more experience. So what's taking effect on March 30th is the new passenger restrictions. And under this new law, new teen drivers will not be allowed to have more than one non-family member under the age of 21 in their vehicle unless they're accompanied by a parent or a guardian or another adult 21. And this law, it does make some exceptions for teens who are driving to or from school or school-sanctioned events. But basically, it limits the passengers, and it, you know, it helps teens be safer. They're not as likely to be talking with you know, lots of kids in the car in the back seat, not paying attention to oh, driving. Oh, well, let me get this straight, if I could. So if you're under 21, you can only have one other person in the car with you who is also under 21 unless there's a guardian involved. Yeah? Well, it, it, if you're, well, that's kind of right. If you're a level 2 driver, if you've just gotten your permit, and you're in the level 2 portion of this. You, you cannot have more than one non non-family member under 21. In other words, if you're, you're a kid, you just got your level 2 license, you can only have one person in that vehicle under oh. 21. How long does um, the level 2... Unless you've got your family with you, and they're helping to guide you. How long does the level 2 period last? Well, generally about 6 months, and there's different stages now. Oh. Level 2 is generally 6 months. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the other restriction we should talk about is nighttime driving, because this is also an important thing. Right now, teen, new teen drivers can drive till midnight be on the road till midnight, but starting March 30th, they have to be off the road at 10 p.m. unless they've got a job, unless they're coming home from a job. But that two-hour change really, well, it doesn't sound like much, but it'll make teens so much safer just to get them home before it's too dark, too dangerous, and just more practice. You know, the more teens you have in the car, the more distractions, the more hours you're on the road without supervision until you've got that experience under your belt. 
So we're really pleased. AAA is part of a coalition. We're having a news conference this morning at 9.15 to announce these new laws. And you may have seen Michael Patrick, the Office of Highway Safety Planning. They've got some great billboards all out around the state helping people get ready and to know that the change is coming. How long does that last, uh, that nighttime driving? You, you cannot drive if you're a, a, a new driver uh, after 10 o'clock. By 10 o'clock, you have to be off the roads. How long does that last after you get your license? Do you know? Well, as you go through stages, and generally Again. it's six months, and it's different for some different age groups. And some, some teens don't start driving or taking driving until they're 17, 18. So there are some variations. But you step up from one level to the next. So, again, it just gives you more experience, more experience behind the wheel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there some web address where we can study these rules, maybe print them out, uh, have them at the dinner table tonight so we can explain them to the kids? Well, a couple places. You know, AAA, we have a new, new teen website, and it's got two parts to it. One's aimed for teens and one's aimed for their parents. Mm -hmm. And it's teendriving.aaa.com. You go on there. You don't have to be a member. There's lots of information about the laws, very specific information. It also gives information to teens on how to be a safer driver with quizzes and on world life driving experiences and, you know, how to you know, avoid being distracted. And also what kinds of cars are the best for teens, choosing a good vehicle for your teen. So lots of information there. All right. You know what surprises me, I guess, is that, that you say that you can't have more than one other person under 21 in the car with you unless you're going to and from a school-sanctioned event. So doesn't that mean if you're going to go to the dance, let's say, on Friday night, you can still pile 18 kids in the car and step on the gas? Well, well, they wouldn't fit. And, you know, this, this is a <laughs> good surprised. step in the right direction. We're hoping that as time goes on, some of these you know, rules can be strengthened. We also would like to see a ban on cell phone use for teens drivers in the vehicle. So this is actually, the, this is the step in the right direction. Our graduated driver's licensing laws took effect starting in, in 96, and, and once in a while, every few years, they're, they're strengthened, a little bit strengthened. So we'd like them to get even stronger in the next year or so. Okay. Can, is there any way we can have it so that no teens can drive till they turn 21? Because I'd probably vote for that. <laughs> I think a lot of parents would say amen to that. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nancy Kane. Good luck at the press conference later today. State Senator Roger Kahn is a Republican from Saginaw. He is joining us this morning, too, because he's a little worried about our youth and a particular potential law coming our way. Good morning to you, Senator. Thanks for being available. Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, very nice to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much. Uh, Senate Bill 0207, uh, s sponsored by Senator Joe Hewn, a fellow Republican from Hamburg. Good, good man, too. Okay. Uh, he, uh, his idea is there would no longer be an age requirement for hunting licenses in Michigan? Yes. Uh, uh, from uh, his uh, point of view and from the point of view of some of the people uh, in uh, the various hunting groups that I belong to, that uh, gives an opportunity to encourage uh, um, the rebirth or of, of hunting in the state of Michigan. There's been uh, some uh, erosion of the number of hunters. Uh, I see it uh, differently, that uh, taking infants out uh, hunting is, uh, uh, is a bad idea. Uh, a one-year-old. So look, you know, uh, D.B. Crockett was three before he got his bar, at least. <laughs> and uh, you're talking about taking a taking kids in diapers out or, or the ability to take kids in diapers out. Well, you're also talking about exposing them to, uh, well, rashes, or powder burns, or flus, or pneumonias. Um, and I, I think it's a bad idea. Uh, you said, in fact, uh, that the bill was ridiculous, and you said, so what, we're going to have a baby with a bottle in his mouth and a gun under his arm? That was hyperbole, yeah. wasn't it? Well, it was hyperbole, but it, it gets the point across. Or somebody who's uh, uh, has a file in his mouth, or needs to be burnt and uh, scares away a uh, deer. And uh, what kind of supervision are we talking about? You just got done talking about you did not think folks until they're 21 maybe shouldn't be driving at all. I understand that's hyperbole, but in this particular bill, the only requirement that uh, for supervision here is somebody who's 21. And uh, I wouldn't say that that's the most seasoned hunter. Mm -hmm. Currently, you have to be at least 10 years old uh, or 12 years old, as I understand it, to hunt a deer, bear, one. or elk with a firearm. So that means you could, if you wanted to, you know, take a six-year-old out, put a rifle in his arm, and let him take a couple shots, huh? Not today. 
But, but if this, if this uh, bill pa uh, passes, yes, it's true. Hmm. Okay. I suppose he needs to get a hunting license. Very interesting. Uh, I think that, that's, that's kind of interesting. Before uh, you, you go uh, to preschool, you go out and get a hunting license, and then uh, 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 off you go. Under supervision, though, is that true? Yeah. There's a, a, the, you have to be supervised by someone that, uh, at least the age of 21 with, uh, quote, uh, previous hunting experience, unquote, whatever that might be. Well, Vice President well, Cheney was under supervision, too, too, wasn't he? For, for that matter. Vice President Cheney was under supervision, too, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I guess we could have a lot of fun with this, okay. uh, with, uh, with a lot of uh, examples. In, in, in any case, uh, uh, the bill will, will be uh, taken up in, uh, in the Senate uh, further, uh, I guess, this week. Some of my friends uh, in the hunting uh, and the natural resources uh, 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 coalitions uh, favor this for the, for the reasons I gave you, to try and uh, increase the number of hunters. I, I think it, if you wanted to do that, a better way to, to go would be to get a hold of the DNR, the uh, hunt clubs, and help them with uh, uh, with an ad campaign that uh, shows the, the the beauty of the outdoors that, uh, and the bonding that takes place uh, uh, with uh, with families or with uh, with children, rather than lowering the age below ten. Yeah, or take a camera out there or something like that. I guess is real. Well, we'll see how it all shakes out. But thanks so much for being available. We have lots of listeners in Saginaw, and they're all very familiar with State Senator Roger Kahn, the Republican from Saginaw. The Aflac duck has been fired. Maybe you heard this by now. It's actually the voice of Gilbert Gottfried, the comedian. And he's the guy who makes this sound on the commercials. Aflac. Yeah, you know the sound. Well, Gilbert Gottfried was fired by Aflac because he, he put some uh, Twitter comments on his Twitter that were jokes about the tsunami and earthquake in Japan and Affleck said, that's not going to work for us. So they are looking for a new voice of Affleck, somebody new to be the duck. And they're going to run a silent commercial with a title card that says, be the next voice. Go to Affleck Duck on Facebook. And there's going to be a competition. And you could be the next Affleck Duck. Amanda Wall's been tracking down the fellow who did the voiceover for the uh, Super Bowl commercial about Detroit. And uh, he lives in Grand Rapids. We wonder if he might apply for that position. And I want to get uh, some word from him on what that would pay. But if you want to call right now and uh, give us your best Affleck Duck, Affleck, we're going to pick a winner, and the winner will get my book, Invite Yourself to the Party, personalized if you like, an autograph. 888-900-9966 is the number to call. 888-900-9966. If your kid's at home getting ready for school and they want to be the Aflac duck, just call us at that number, 888-900-9966. We'll put you right on the air, and at the end of the program, we'll pick a winner and send a copy out. The book is now available, by the way, on Kindle at Amazon.com. We've got a book signing next Monday, I think it is. I'll tell you about that when we get back. 888-900-9966 if you want to win by being the Aflac duck. Wherever you're listening across the state of Michigan or if you're watching on Fox 47 television, let's go outside our American Metal Roof studio where Amanda Wall is in the street kind of taking a look at the weather. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning, Michael Patrick. I am down the street from the Capitol right outside of the American Metal Roof studio, and it is raining right now. There's a bunch of standing water right outside next to the curb. It's pretty chilly, so you should be careful on your way to work this morning. Some of that uh, rain could be freezing rain or slick or even icy, so be careful this morning if you're making your way in. It was pouring rain just a few minutes ago, and Amanda out there looked like the Morton Salt girl with the umbrella <laughs> and trying to <laughs> beat the elements. It's nasty and cold. Now, Gilbert Gottfried, we told you, was uh, fired as the voice of the Aflac duck in the television commercials. This is what he sounded like. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like he's out there in the rain, too. What do you sound like, though? Because they're going to replace him, and I'm thinking that's a big money gig to be the Aflac uh, voice, and they're going to have a contest, and we are this morning, too. Give you a shot at it, and if you win, you'll get my book, Invite Yourself to the Party, sent to you. It's now available on Kindle as well at, at Amazon.com, and on March 28th, uh, we're going to have a book signing at Art Van Furniture from 5.30 till 7.30. It's actually being put on uh, by the uh, very powerful women's group uh, called uh, Inforum, 
And uh, but men and women are welcome. It's going to be like kind of like a cocktail hour, if you will, from 5:30 to 7:30 at the Art Van Furniture on Saginaw Highway in Lansing. We'll see you there. We'll give a little talk. We'll sign books and that sort of thing. Thank you for, uh, very much to Inforum for having me there. 28th is is that uh, Tuesday, I think, or is that Monday next week? Monday. Monday next week, March 28th, 5:30 to 7:30 at Art Van Furniture on Saginaw Highway in West Lansing. There. Uh, <laughs> Right off of the freeway. Mike in Fountain, you are in the air. Good morning to you, sir. It's uh, Frank in Fountain. Frank in Fountain. Well, that's nice alliteration <laughs> anyway. And uh, maybe the new Aflac duck will come from Fountain. Do you want to give it your best shot? Yes, I will. Let it rip. Aflac. All right. So we will put you down there. And as they say in the, in the advertising business, don't call us. We'll call you. We'll get your number, Mike, and uh, for Frank there in Fountain with his Aflac Duck. George is in Battle Creek this morning, wants to audition to be the next Aflac Duck. George, good morning to you. Good morning. Now, you're going to do a little role-playing here. You've got to imagine yourself as that little duck in the commercial, and uh, how would he sound? Aflac! Oh. Aflac! See, he's got his own interpretation there. He got into the method acting, George, and he gave us his version. And not everybody's going to be like Gilbert Gottfried. I'm sure he sort of created that, and it became its own. And this is what Gilbert Gottfried sounded like. Yeah, but very almost extreme sort of sound to it. And uh, George's take was a little bit different, George, so we'll get your number. And as they say in the advertising business, okay. don't call us. We'll call you. We're going to go live to Detroit right now where Michael O'Callaghan will join us. He's the Executive Vice President and COO of the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning to you, Michael Patrick. How are you? Good. I'm just wondering uh, how uh, disturbed you were by the fact that Detroit's population now at its lowest level since uh, 1910, 713,000 people. That's down a, a sort of staggering 25% over the past decade. What's your reaction? Well, it is disappointing. I don't think it came as a real big surprise. There, you know, with the effects of the auto industry's downturn uh, over the past couple of years, an awful lot of people lost their jobs and needed to move on out of southeastern Michigan. Uh, a number of people have moved from the city of Detroit, as you know, into the suburbs, so the region remains still a big, vibrant area. Uh, but this is certainly going to challenge the city of Detroit. And, you know, and, and the big picture is going to challenge the state of Michigan because, as the governor said, the state goes the way the city of Detroit goes. I was at a, uh, a function yesterday that was hosted by Downtown Detroit Development Group, and some of the changes that are taking place in Detroit for the positive are remarkable with the younger generation. And... You know, I'm hoping that for the purposes of the city of Detroit, things have bottomed out and, um, you know, the, the things are going to become much better as time goes on. But it certainly is going to be a long process. Uh, it's a keen point that you make, though, because when you look at Michigan's five largest cities, now this is by population, we're talking about Detroit still number one. Grand Rapids, number two, then Warren and Sterling Heights in the next uh, positions before you get to Lansing. So when your point is well taken that it's the, you know, they call it the Chicagoland area in Chicago, but in Detroit, in suburban Detroit, you know, you still have a giant population there. It's remarkable. I've, I've you know, certainly had the opportunity to fly over the city of Detroit at night or the, the mm -hmm. region at night. And. You know, regardless of, again, what's happened with the population in the city of Detroit, you get a real sense for it when you fly over this area because it lights up from somewhere just west of Ann Arbor, and the lights remain on all the way to Port Huron. It's a gigantic area. And, you know, I think Mayor Bing has, has pointed out with his attempt to kind of redesign the city of Detroit. Yeah. If you looked at the city limits of the city, you could place San Francisco and Boston and Manhattan all into that landmass. Um, it's just mind-boggling. So, um, you know, there's certainly, there's certainly a, a lot of opportunity. And, again, the region is just still a gigantic place. All right, we've got listeners in Petoskey and Traverse City and Grand Rapids and Mount Pleasant and St. Joe, Benton, Harper. What's the web address they go to if they want to come over and check out Detroit? We certainly would love for them to do that. Our web address is visitdetroit.com. Visit yeah, Detroit.com. Uh, they're, they're welcome to come and 
take a look at the Detroit Metro Convention and Visitors Bureau and all of the great offerings that this region has this summer. With You're open our- for business at visitdetroit.com, even though the population is down. Tourism expected to be up at 14 before the hour. It's Michael Patrick Shields. Ten minutes before the hour, the United States uh, Defense Secretary Robert Gates says the intensity of the military campaign in Libya is going to ease soon. Allied forces have imposed a no-fly zone on Muammar Gaddafi's regime. That enables the rebels to push out of their eastern stronghold, and so the fighting should recede in the next few days, according to Gates. He gave a press conference in Moscow. Now, uh, the uh, conflict, uh, though, for the moment, very, very tenuous, and we've seen now of flare-ups in places like Bahrain and Egypt and uh, Libya, and some say that uh, Syria is the next hot spot. We'll see about all that. It is a Wildcat Wednesday, brought to you by uh, Northern Michigan University, and on the other end of our line right now, Mohi Mawapi, the professor at Northern Michigan University, will be the featured speaker at Islam and the World, Perpetual Confrontation or Enlightened Reconciliation. Good morning, and thank you for being available. Uh, Good morning. Um, it, in our lifetime, it's been perpetual confrontation. Do you ever see a point where we will get enlightened reconciliation with the Middle East? Well, eventually we will. I mean, the, the, the history of, of humanity proves that. It is a very difficult period when we are just getting there. But I honestly believe eventually we will. How long would that take? I will be a liar if I tell you that I can, I can say anything with any accuracy. But I, I must say that it is an incredibly exciting time, and I encourage everybody not to be disconnected from what is happening. Our national security, our, our morality in front of everybody is or are really at high stakes, and, and we need to be connected with what is going on. And by connected, I suppose what you mean is informed. Uh, yes. What's the best way to do that? The best way to require something that I afraid, at least as I'm a teacher, what we are slowly losing, and that is committing intellectual reservoir to be informed from good sources. Because as I hope you will agree with me that information is, is abundance out there. Sadly, not all of it is accurate. And some of it actually is manipulated. Mm-hmm. And I, I do empathize with, with especially young people to make you know, a distinction between the two. But some of them do not read anything at all. And at well, least, you know, know. be informed with something. I would even say, irrespective of what your source is, but be analytical as you listen. Because sometimes you have to make things make sense before you accept them. The, uh, the images that people see on Fox News and television news of uh, yes. the, the shouting and the expressions of hatred and the burning the American flag and yes. even somebody like Gaddafi who seems to be a madman when you see him on camera, uh, that, that's as far as a lot of people go. And they say, wow, you know, I'm glad I'm not over there and I'm, I'm glad they're not over no. here. Yeah. But we're in Michigan. We've got a huge Middle East popula- population right here in our midst, Uh, but but the the fear is that the the idea of uh, an Islamic person becomes almost cartoonish. Yes, you you are spot on. You really are spot on with this. And particularly when there is something going in the Middle East, this takes uh, a life of its own, basically. But we need to remember that at least if we look at the revolutions that are a little bit more uh, on their path, than the one in Libya, for example. Uh, it, it is remarkable in Cairo, I'm, and maybe this is my bias because this is where I was born. Mm-hmm. In Cairo, we never saw an American flag being burned. We never saw an Israeli flag being burned. We actually never saw uh, the usual predominance of slogans of Islamists uh, that are basically rhetoric, but none of this was there. And what was really heartwarming is the complete opposite of what we became used to when we say they hate us for our freedom. Mm -hmm. No, they actually do not. They love our freedom. That was their aspiration. And we're all, you know, we belong to the same species. This is is 
a universal you know, longing, lust even, for a, a time and place where you are valued as a human, your opinions are valued, your health is valued, your welfare is valued, that your leaders actually have you and the country to be the focus of their attention, and they have not lived like that. And they look at us and they see that we really live like that and say, why not? Hmm. And I think this is a great moment to make friends with the Arab Muslim world. We need friends in the Arab Muslim world. And like you were saying, Michigan has a large population of Arabs and of, of Muslims. This is our absolutely best bridge to the Muslim world, instead of alienating them by calling for investigating every Muslim and, uh, you know, at a time of anxiety, I'm sure people would do very irrational things. You know, and it's it's simple, too. I mean, not all Arabs are Muslims. Some people don't know that. They think everybody from the Middle East is a Muslim, and that's not the case. And this is the kind of learning that's going on at Northern Michigan University. I'd like to keep in touch with you if we could, sir. We sure appreciate it. As uh, events unfold in the Middle East, we'll speak with Mohi Mawafi, a professor at Northern Michigan University. He is the speaker at Islam and the World, Perpetual Confrontation or Enlightened Reconciliation. He says reconciliation will come only a matter of when. Jerry West next hour and Congressman Mike Rogers from the Intelligence Committee. It's Michael Patrick Shields back after the news. Good morning, Michigan. A very pleasant Wednesday to you. It's Michael Patrick Shields. It's cold and it's damp, uh, but we're glad to have you with us this morning to heat things up. There was no winner last night in the Mega Millions jackpot, so Friday's drawing will be $304 million at stake. I'll see you at the lottery line for a bit of that action. We are at our American Metal Roof studio this morning, and uh, Gary Austin is our anchorman. He's going to bring us up to date on what's going on around the state. Coming up shortly, though, Congressman Mike Rogers, the Republican who is chair of the House Intelligence Committee, will tell us about the latest news out of Libya. Explosions and heavy anti-aircraft gunfire rang out today in the Libyan capital hours after the nation's defiant leader vowed to win his battle with the coalition forces, we will talk in just a couple of minutes with a man who will tell us whether that kind of talk could drive gas prices up to $7 a gallon this summer. Stay tuned for that, too. And Jerry West, the 14-time uh, NBA All-Star player. He was a general manager. He was a coach of the Lakers. We'll talk with Jerry West a little bit later. Now here's Gary Austin. Good morning. Well, good morning. This update is service of the AARP, a membership group, leading positive change and delivering value to people age 50 and over through information, advocacy, and service. Well, we knew this latest population count overall in Michigan would not be good in this new census study, but come to find out it's worse than most figured, the state losing about 44,000 in the last 10 years. Michigan's economic problems getting a lot of the blame for that, unable to find work here, many left entirely for that reason alone. Now, in Detroit, we'd have to go back a hundred years to find fewer people living in the city now at just over 774,000 over the past 10 years a drop of about 25 percent however Mayor Bing says there was a mistake here Bing says about 40,000 in Detroit did not get counted and he hopes to see to it they are added to the grand total eventually on the upside in the Grand Rapids area for example seven counties there saw a population jump of about 6%. But overall, Grand Rapids uh, down by 5% over the last decade, as we understand. Uh, they lost about 10,000 people uh, from uh, 10 years ago. And so if you look at the top cities by population in, the, in Michigan, you have Detroit still number one, then mm. Grand Rapids number two, uh, Warren number three, Sterling Heights number four, those are both uh, Detroit suburbs, and then Lansing number five, and I got to believe uh, what Traverse City would be some Saginaw Flint was down too quite a bit in their census numbers. And so uh, this is all going to mean, Gary Austin, that there'll be redist redistricting and yes. redrawing of the congressional districts. And we're going to talk with Congressman Mike Rogers about that in, in just a couple of minutes. But uh, you know who is crowing today? It's Lansing Mayor Verge Bernero because he had a population jump. Flint yep. lost 18 percent, for instance. But Lansing actually crept up, and he says, uh, Mayor Bernero, even in the toughest economy in generations, there no doubt we're on the right track, rebuilding the local economy, creating new jobs over the past five years. 
And uh, Lansing's official population is now 114,297. Uh, so that's up a touch. And on that same day, there's a new poll released by MERS News that suggests uh, it's a, actually conducted by the public policy polling, but it's uh, running in MERS News this morning, that if the election for governor were held today, Verge Bernero would lead Rick Snyder by two percentage points in a yeah. head-to-head poll. How about that? <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> it shows a dramatic drop-off in support for Rick Snyder, and, you know, the honeymoon is over, I guess, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, oh, so much attention is being paid to all this budget-cutting business, and I think, you know, Governor Can Snyder has mayor? an enviable job, obviously, of having to do that. But, you know, he's made it clear, I mean, he said all along, you know, this is what he's going to do, so he is not, he's not changing, and again, Rick Snyder... Um, very, very unfazed at all this protest business and everything else. He says his, he's really focused on getting this done, and, and how it all shakes out, we'll see. But, but Rick Snyder is definitely staying the course. Yeah, you he know. says he's proud. He's following through on what he campaigned on. Yeah. Uh, but only 33% of the voters approve of uh, Rick Snyder, according yep. to this poll. You know, when it comes to this population drop business statewide, the governor is saying this is a wake-up call. Those are his words saying this is another example of why the state has got to change the way it does business. Snyder, again, um, focusing on that 44,000 um, population drop that we've seen here in the last 10 years. He says this is reason enough to reinvent Michigan, and he intends on doing that. Um, you know, we have some financial contributions to schools. That often makes news. And then there is this. Hmm. Western Michigan U in Kalamazoo, a huge donation. And whoever made the contribution is not saying who they are. But this school is now $100 million richer. Turns out this is the largest donation of its kind ever to a state school in Michigan and the 15th largest ever anywhere in the country. And this money is going to be used to help Western start its own medical school. An anonymous donation. Yes. Of yes. all that money. That's a lot of money. You know, the um, state house took this one up, Michael Patrick, unable to undo what the Michigan Civil Service Commission did earlier, clearing the way for the partners of unmarried state workers to get benefits from the state. Now, this includes unmarried gay and straight couples. Now, as long as one works for the state, they qualify. Lawmakers in the House needed one of those super majorities to scrap the provision, but were unable to round up the needed votes to do that. Oh, so it's uh, benefits still remain for yes, uh, yes. unmarried couples. It, it, it stays in place. We've got a new audit out, too. Mm, I'm surprised, it, aren't you, a little bit, um, you know, the given the makeup of the House? The supermajority is big. Oh. I mean, that's, that, that is a lot of votes. But, yeah, on balance, when I saw that, I was surprised. It'll be curious be to see if they try to run this again. But so far, benefits for unmarried couples, state workers, that provision stays intact. We've got a new audit out. Listen to this. It finds some who had been getting an unemployment check when they were alive. You know, they're still getting one, even though they're no longer with us. Oh, really? Who's yep. cashing it? It's true. Who knows? The audit found that, along with fraudulent claims, is costing the system here a ton of money. This is coming at a time, as we know, when the state has had to ask for nearly $4 billion from the federal government to cover the mounting cost of making sure the many in our state legitimately in need of a jobless check get theirs. Governor Snyder, he's aware of this, and he says efforts are being made right now to try to fix this mess, to try to fix the system and make it better. You know, perhaps where you work, that office of yours, that desk, maybe it's ergonomically friendly. In other words, it's designed in such a way to make it really comfortable. We have to sit in one place for a long, long time. We know. We know about that. While many companies have done this sort of thing voluntarily on their own, there had been some talk, remember, in the state legislature to make ergonomics in the workplace state law. Uh -huh. Guess who's having none of that? The Republicans. You're right. In particular, Governor Snyder, he says, forget that. In fact, the governor has signed a new law. It's a burden on place. business. Yeah. He says it, it will not allow state regulators to require companies to make sure these ergonomic changes are in place. Snyder's saying... That should not be a provision saying rules like that would put an unfair burden on Michigan companies. I think so, too. So the Thank governor you very much. very that, clear. You know, I found it curious, um, your um, interview earlier with Nancy Kane and some of those new provisions that are going into place, new rules and regs for, for teenage, teenage drivers. drivers. Yeah, March 30th, right around the corner here, some new rules and regs. Um, this includes a curfew from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. Now, the way the law reads now, that curfew does not start until midnight. And another provision here, if a teen is driving, only one non-family passenger under the age of 20 will be allowed to be riding 
in the same vehicle with that teen. So yeah, they have to be off the road by there. 10 o'clock. The curfew is currently midnight, yep. but now it's 10 o'clock as we understand it. Yep. And we were also uh, joined earlier by State Senator Roger Kahn, who is reacting to the idea of uh, taking away the age restriction on hunting licenses. In other mm. words, kids under 10 could have a rifle out there, and he, he thinks that's not a very good idea. He says, quote, what are we going to have, a baby with a bottle in one hand and a rifle in the other? He said he thinks it's kind of uh, ridiculous, and there are other ways to get kids involved in hunting as opposed to putting a rifle in a you know three-year-old's hand. <laughs> On uh, the other end of our line right now with us this morning, too, John Felmy is the American Petroleum Institute chief economist. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Watching very closely the news here out of Libya, the, the question is, is it possible? How high could the gas prices go this summer if this isn't resolved quickly? Well, we've already seen an increase that the market has reacted to Libya. Uh, you lost about uh, roughly 2% of world supply, and so we saw crude oil prices go up uh, by about 15 to $20 a barrel. Uh, of course, the bigger question is beyond Libya. Libya is a relatively small supplier, so got to pay attention to the other parts of the Middle East. So let's say you and I are going to get in the car and drive to Traverse City, or we're going to go on up to Marquette and visit Northern Michigan University uh, on 4th of July this summer. How much will the gas price be, you think, per gallon? Well, we're not in the business of forecasting prices because of antitrust law, but the key thing is if you look at the Department of Energy's forecast, they're indicating that they're expecting uh, a peak of prices somewhere around the 375 uh, okay. national average. Of course, Michigan's a little higher because you've got about 7 or $0.08 cents a gallon higher taxes. We would take that number to the bank right now, I think, if we could lock it in at a fixed rate and be safe with that because we have nightmares, uh, you know, some people telling us it could be up to $7 a gallon, it could be up to $4 a gallon, but uh, nevertheless, that would be a pretty good price if that were true. Thank you very much. We'll keep in touch as events unfold with John Felmy from the American Petroleum Institute. He's the chief economist. Gary Austin's News was brought to you by AARP on this Wildcat Wednesday, brought to you by Northern Michigan University. Coming up, our Northwood University leader of the day, Jerry West, who is the 14-time NBA All-Star, one of the most accomplished general managers, too, in NBA history, all with the Lakers. And he's the guy who's on the NBA logo. Northwood University celebrating 50 years of producing leaders and encouraging free enterprise. That coming shortly. It's Michael Patrick Shields on Wednesday. So we are still looking for people who want to apply to be the Aflac Duck this morning because um, Gilbert Gottfried, the comedian, you know Gilbert Gottfried, he's the voice of the Aflac Duck. Here's what he sounds like. Yeah. Well, it's very recognizable, but they fired him because on his Twitter account he made some jokes about the Japanese earthquake and the tsunami, and so now they're looking for somebody else to take his place, and they're going to have a contest. It has to do with Monster.com and Facebook and so forth, and the competition will reveal a new Aflac duck. So we thought we'd have our own competition this morning. We've had a few people call in with their versions of what the Aflac duck would sound like. And so we are asking you to do that right now at 888-900-9966. The Disco Duck and the Aflac Duck, 888-900-9966. Ring us up if your kids are getting ready for school and they want to give it a shot, too. All you have to do is give the old Aflac Duck in your version, just Aflac or whatever your interpretation might be. Some of them are different, you know. 888-900-9966. We'll pick a winner and send out my book, Invite Yourself to the Party to the Winner. And by the way, that's now available on Kindle, if you're interested in that, at uh, Amazon.com. We're going to have a uh, book signing next Monday from 5.30 to 7.30, thanks to uh, Inforum at uh, Art Van Furniture. That's on Saginaw Highway in the Lansing area. If you're coming from anywhere in the state, it's right off the highway. And that'll be from 5.30 to 7.30, informal sort of cocktails and hors d'oeuvres at the Art Van Furniture in West Lansing on Saginaw Highway. Easy to get to on and off the freeway, and uh, we'll put that information for you at michigantalknetwork.com. Uh, now, back to the duck, 888-900-9966, if you want to try out not to be the disco duck, because we can't show disco on the radio, but we can do the Aflac duck, so you stay tuned for that. Uh, it is 26 minutes after the hour, just four minutes away, too, from uh, Jerry West, who will join us, the great NBA star. Played his entire career for the Lakers and became the general manager and the coach, and he was on the gold medal team from 1960 Olympics in Rome. And uh, was the, he's the, if you look at the NBA logo, you know, you see the silhouette of an NBA player with the ball. That's Jerry West.
That was he was the model for that. So stay tuned for Jerry West coming up very shortly. 888-900-9966 is the number to apply to be the Aflac duck. Um, a security officer at the McNamara Federal Building in Detroit stored a suspicious package that turned out to contain a bomb for three weeks before he alerted the authorities. Uh, it's a total embarrassment, the incident. Uh, David Wright, who is the president of the American Federation of Government Employees, said he, quote, apparently set it aside. And uh, it should have been uh, left in place, and they should have called the canine detection unit to see if they could make a determination about it. The uh, package was placed between two dumpsters on the McNamara building uh, near uh, Michigan Avenue down there, and the bomb squad got the device. But it was sitting around for three weeks, this uh, bomb in a box in downtown Detroit. We never let the birthday of a beautiful woman pass without taking note. Carrie Russell is 35 today. You would have seen her in Mission Impossible 3 and the TV series Felicity. So happy birthday, darling, to you. Uh, 28 minutes after the hour. The Pistons, by the way, are going to have the Miami Heat in tonight, and that ought to be interesting with LeBron James and the whole nine yards. That'll be at the Auburn Hills. And the Red Wings are going to have the uh, Vancouver Canucks in Detroit as well tonight. Uh, uh, they are going to be without, ready for this, Todd Bertuzzi, Yuri Hudler, Johan Franz, and Pavel Datsuk all going to miss the game tonight because of injuries. So how will the Red Wings fare against the Canucks? Find out with us tomorrow morning. Unfortunately, the Michigan State women's basketball team has been bounced from the NCAA women's basketball tournament. The fourth-seeded Spartans lost the fifth-seeded Wisconsin Green Bay team 65-56 to 56 last night in Wichita, Kansas. Sad to hear that. MSU ends the season 27-6, and six, first place in the Big Ten during the regular season, and we'd hoped for more, so Susie Merchant and the team done for the year. Tigers lost to the Mets yesterday 7-4 to four in the Grapefruit League action. That was at Joker Marchant Stadium in Lakeland. Detroit has the day off and they're going to host the Washington Nationals tomorrow. Barry Bonds' trainer is back in jail. He's refused to testify against the home run king. The NFL made rule changes yesterday. We talked to Ken Dallafor from Blue Cross Blue Shield, the NFL veteran, a little bit earlier. The kickoffs are now going to be uh, moving from the 30-yard line to the 35-yard line. Touchbacks will stay at the 20-yard line, but the kicking team is only going to be allowed a 5-yard running start instead of a 15-yard running start. And uh, we think that's all to do with the health and safety of the players is what that is. Uh, officials now up in the booth, the eye in the sky, the video cameras are going to confirm all questionable scoring plays, not those uh, only within the last two minutes of the game. So whenever you get a touchdown that's anywhere close, be prepared for a little delay because they're going to have a close look at that. And the New York Giants Hall of Fame linebacker Lawrence Taylor He's 52 years old. He pleaded guilty to sexual misconduct and patronizing a prostitute who was 16 years old, has been given six years probation for that. We've been talking all morning about uh, Jerry West being on the program. We told you all of his credentials, and he is with us right now. Good morning, Mr. West. Pleasure to speak to you. Good morning. Um, it, it, we talk a lot about the fact that you are the NBA logo. That's your silhouette on there. Do you still look like that if we put you up under the hot lights? Well, with, with the blonde hair now. <laughs> <laughs> but in excellent shape still. We, uh, the, 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 the Miami Heat's coming to Detroit tonight, and uh, it leads me to ask you what you thought, although it's an old question by now, of the, the way LeBron James sort of handled that transition last summer. And after all, you were the LeBron of your time. Well, you know, I think everyone has a, a different uh, ability to do things today, and have players of our era made that possible. I, I have no problem with it myself because he had a right to go to play where he wanted to play, and uh, and that's what uh, players, a lot of players, would like to do. They they want to play different places. The way it was handled, obviously, I think they could have done a better job. But actually, uh, you know, we're here today to talk about uh, something, a health problem that I have, and uh, have a, one of the most. America's most uh, pronounced experts in this area, Dr. Protowski, is with us today, and uh, I want to talk a little bit about my uh, condition that um, that I played with and I've had for years, and that's uh, atrial fibrillation, and uh, most people call it uh, AFib, and how I've had to deal with it, and how I had to deal with an athlete. I'm atypical in the sense I had it at a very early age, and um, the things that affected me and and now at this period of my life when I'm most reflective, I want to talk about this because I think it's going to help save lives, give people more information, 
about what they uh, need to do to uh, protect themselves from uh, from terrible consequences. And there is a website you can t uh, look at, AFSTAP.com, and there's a place on there also there where you can share your story. And uh, and and frankly, uh, it's something that I feel very very it's very important. It's very important for the health of people as they age. You know, uh, you spent your entire career with the Lakers uh, as a general manager, as a coach, as a player, and and down the heat of the stretch, uh, when you were in a tight, close game, obviously, you know, your your adrenaline is up and your heart rate is probably up. Would you have? Is, would that have been something you could have noticed in the heat of battle? Like, uh oh, my ticker's really going here. Well, I particularly noticed it when I would sit down, not when I was playing. Sometimes you'd be a little bit dizzy and stuff. And, and again, I was not diagnosed until I was 40 with this disease. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, I mean, it, you, you do, it makes you do crazy things. Your body reacts differently. But in those kind of type of situation, uh, that was almost kind of a scripted thing in, in a sense that uh, you know somebody's going to take the shot. And a coach always had someone he felt had more confidence in, and our coach had confidence that I could deliver in those kind of situations. But the stress is enormous, and obviously stress uh, creates more of a problem for anyone that has this. But, the, uh, but again, the dangerous thing is some people are not typically uh, equipped to, uh, like me. Uh, I felt it. Some people don't feel it. And uh, Dr. Putowski, who's with us, who's an expert in this field, I think he can give you a better idea of what it's like to uh, to have this disease, and more importantly, uh, to talk about the dangers of it. Yeah, Do Michael, Dr. Uh, let, me, let me just take a brief moment to yeah. go over that, because I think it can really help a lot of people, and Jerry's right. AFib affects over 2.5 million people in the country. Um, it can often be a silent disease until, it, until you wind up with a stroke. It can cause all the symptoms and problems that Jerry's mentioned, uh, but it also can be silent, and, and it, it can cause heart failure, it can cause strokes, and there's something you can do about it. So um, we're on this national campaign trying to get people to understand how to treat it better. And uh, like Jerry mentioned, AFSTAT.com is an excellent uh, starting point. And one of the things I worry most about is the stroke issues. I mean, uh, in the elderly, uh, unknown strokes, it's estimated a quarter of them are due to unrecognized atrial fibrillation. So if you go to this, uh, this uh, website, there's a little portion on there called an AFib evaluator. And if you don't know you have the disease, it lets you at least take the test, have some fun, take the test, and see if you have risk factors. And if you do, my strong suggestion is, is that you at least uh, discuss it with your doctor because better to find out what's going on and, and prevent a bad thing from happening than to have to deal with it once it does. All right, we will take it to the bank, uh, Jerry West, just like all those bank shots you sunk. Say hi to Magic Johnson if you see him before we do. We're right here in East Lansing, and that is Jerry West. Now, can exercise and sex increase your risk of a heart attack? We'll find out as soon as we get back. It's Michael Patrick Shields. I know you were hoping for more from the Jerry West interview. I was, too, but he was uh, clearly intent on talking about the uh, atrial fibrillation uh, matter, which really supposedly ended his career a little bit early. He didn't di wasn't diagnosed until he was 40, but uh, nevertheless, that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Now, there is some breaking news this morning, somewhat related, that I thought I'd let you know about. This is from uh, Health.com and CNN. Exercising or having sex apparently triples your risk of a heart attack in the hours immediately afterward, especially <laughs> if the person does those activities infrequently. According to the Journal of American Medical Association, heart patients should not abstain from sex or forego exercise based on the finding, but a threefold increase in heart attack risk sounds scary. Dr. John Wyckoff from the Wyckoff Wellness Center is on the other end of our line right now. Good morning, doctor. Dr. Wyckoff, can you hear me? Well, we're going to have to reconnect the string between the two Dixie cups. So we, we get, doctor, can you hear me? I guess he cannot. Uh, we're going to redial him there or, or sort out what's going on there. This is uh, something we want to get to the bottom of, if you will. Uh, this study says uh, participants who were more physically active appeared to be less susceptible to a heart attack following intercourse or a workout. It doesn't say if you could have a heart attack during intercourse, but we want to talk to Dr. John Wyckoff about all these matters as he comes up shortly here. It's a Wildcat Wednesday brought to you by Northern Michigan University. Michael Patrick Shields heard all across the state on radio stations in Mount Pleasant, Petoskey, Traverse City, Hastings, Lansing, Saginaw, Grand Rapids, Muskegon, and St. Joe Benton Harbor. We'll try one more time here with Dr. John Wyckoff. Good morning to you, sir. 
Good morning. Uh, I don't know if you were able to hear the setup there or not because we had some sort of technical problem with you, but the health.com CNN are reporting uh, data from the Journal of American Medical Association saying that exercising or having sex triples a person's risk of heart attack in the hours immediately afterward, especially if the person does those activities infrequently. Any reaction? Well, I think that would mean that we should advise our uh, heart patients to be having uh, sex more often to reduce that risk. That's the way I would look at that, Michael. I think that's the optimistic way to look at it, no question about it. Uh, smoke them if you got them is what they used to say during the war, right? I think that's exactly right. Now, for a long time, we've always known that sometimes in the early morning hours, there are certain hormonal changes that are uh, um, they go through the body that do put an increased demand on the heart. Your blood pressure tends to go up. Your heart rate tends to go up, usually around 4 a.m. And we oftentimes see an increase in heart events during that period of time. Really? So I don't think it's too far-fetched to believe that you know, having intercourse uh, the night before may end up increasing the risk of, uh, of an early morning event to some extent. I think like most studies, you've got to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, look at the population that was studied, what the, what the parameters were, or you really can draw conclusive long-term uh, information from it. Uh, they do say that people who are more physically active appear to be less susceptible to a heart attack following intercourse or a workout. That just makes sense, doesn't it? Well, I think that stands to reason, too. We always, uh, the, you know, the act of having intercourse, having sex, does take a lot of energy. And when you're putting forth that amount of energy, you're straining that heart muscle. People who are exercising on a regular basis tend to have increased blood flow to all of their muscles, including the heart muscle. The heart muscle is not that different than any other muscle. It needs blood supply to function appropriately, and regular exercise helps promote healthy blood vessel development in the heart muscle. Um, you're suggesting that if you're in better shape and you work out, you're most likely, in the case of a male anyway, a better lover? You know, that's a great conclusion to draw from that, Michael, and uh, since... Um, you know, I go out, and I'm at the um, gym every morning, and I know you're a regular contributor. We should be right at the top of the list. <laughs> well, the blood flow is vital. I mean, that's part of the deal, right? There's no doubt about it. You know, whenever you have a heart attack, you, um, you have a period of time when part of the heart muscle is deprived of blood flow. What happens when you exercise is that you develop collateral circulation. You develop increased numbers of blood vessels. So the theory being if one blood vessel is compromised by a clot or an occlusion, if there's another blood vessel nearby that can pick up the slack, you won't have an event. Does that, does that kind of make sense? How many calories would you say, um, I don't know, a little uh, a roll in the hay would burn at, uh, you know, four in the morning when you're susceptible? How many calories do you think you're burning on average? I, I, I've never seen a, a study. I, I would think that even if it was fairly a vigorous activity, for what I would presume the um, normal average couple may engage in, we're probably talking in the uh, two to 300 calorie range. Now. You know, that's a pretty good amount because when you get on the treadmill and you try to burn 300 calories, you're there for a while. I mean, you're there for a half an hour or so, and, and uh, that uh, maybe even more than that. And most of the events that we're talking about takes, you know, less than half an hour, don't you think, on average? Well, Michael, it depends if, um, if it's from your experience or mine, I guess. But, uh, <laughs> clearly, clearly, I think that, that runs the norm from probably uh, a few minutes to uh, an extended period of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. John Wyckoff from the Wyckoff Wellness Center. You can hear him on the Michigan Talk Network on the weekend. Health.com is saying exercising, exercising, having sex triples the risk of a heart attack in the hours immediately afterward. But they don't say to stop exercising or stop having sex. Really, you ought to do it more and build up a tolerance, is what Dr. Wyckoff says. 14 before the hour, Michael Patrick Shields. A 49-year-old uh, man is in jail in uh, Sullivan County uh, for uh, showing up for a court hearing on a felony DWI charge, drunk and carrying an open can of Bush beer plus four cans in a bag. Probably brought a six-pack to his to his trial. Uh, he was an hour and a half late, too, for his court appearance. And the judge said, are you enjoying your liquid lunch? And uh, the man said, I am. 
and I'm sorry. And then the judge sent him to jail with no bail. Uh, Puerto Rico's non-voting congressional delegate was the biggest spender last year in the U.S. House of Representatives, according to a nonpartisan foundation. $2.1 million in expenses for Pedro Pierluisi. Uh, that is more than even House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. That's 257 grand more than Speaker Pelosi, and uh, apparently he pays uh, 1.2 million to his staff, uh, 174,000 on printing, and 60,000 big ones on travel. Oh, by the way, congressional representatives' uh, expenses are uh, paid by you, the U.S. taxpayers. Uh, Detroit's population is uh, now at its lowest level since 1910. The latest uh, census figures show Detroit's population just over 713,000 people. That's down 25% over the past decade. That's one resident every 22 minutes since the year 2000 and last year. Pete Waldmeyer, who has written for the Detroit Free Press, the Detroit News, and uh, spent his whole life there in the city of Detroit working, is on the other end of our line this morning. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, Michael Patrick. Well, how uh, disappointing is it for you to hear about this flight from the city of Detroit? Well, I, I tell you how disappointing it is. I'm heading out. I live in a a, a near in suburb, mm-hmm. and and I'm heading to uh, check out the assessments this morning at, at at City Hall because I've got I got to go contest my my uh, real estate taxes later on in the month. Yeah, which are which are seem to be going up unrealistically. And uh, you know, and now I get this thing. I think I can. Uh, I, that's another thing I could use in my defense, I suppose. Hmm. It's disgusting, really. Uh, that you know, that goes on like this. And I'm sure that uh, you know. Actually, I'm sure there are more people there. It's just the problem is in Detroit. It's just like uh, with uh, a registration for uh, voting. You know, just people just don't register to vote. People duck. They don't want to talk to census for one reason or another. You know, it's really kind of, it's a real mess. And, uh, uh, Dave Bing has done such a good job here, um, you know, just holding on to what, what there is, trying to hold on to what there is. But it's, it's really, it's going to hurt a lot. You're in uh, Candace Miller's district, are you not? Yes, I am. Now the, uh, uh, well, the... No, I'm not in Candace Miller's district. Uh, I, I'm in... Um, uh, I was in uh, uh, Kilpatrick's mom's district. Oh, okay. And, uh, so you're in Hanson Clark's district Hanson, now. Hanson Clark, yeah. So your district is tiny, and something's going to have to be done, apparently, with that district. Candace Miller's district, very close to you, uh, yeah. is, is the biggest in the state. I mean, they're going to have to do something with that, too, 719,000. Yeah, well, uh, you know, Sandy Levin's out to the west of her, and um, I think, you know, Sandy's got a, a lot of clout out there, too. So is Candace, so... Uh, I think, you know, if anybody gets squeezed out, it'll probably be Hanson. Yeah, well, it's going to be interesting He's to see. He's the new kid on the block, you know. Yeah, how, how it all shakes out. And then you've got uh, Mike Rogers is the other big one there in the Brighton area. Those are the two biggest. Both of those are going to have to become a little bit smaller. But, yeah. um, uh, I, I, you know, what message does it send? It's making national news this morning, that kind of population drop. I mean, you've seen Detroit from before the riots, through the riots, and up until now. Are we on the upswing or rock bottom? Uh, you know, I thought we had rock bottom about 20 years ago, but uh, mm. somebody's got a piece in the Detroit News this morning saying, uh, one of the guys, uh, no, I get in the free press, uh, uh, Walsh has got a piece saying, well, with you heard the thud, now we're at rock bottom, now we can start back. Well, I, yeah, I thought that 30 years ago, so, mm. um, and I better out a lot longer than Tom Walsh is, too. Yeah. I just, you know. We just, I think we hit rock bottom then, and we just been, those thuds, there have been several of them. They just, we just keep bouncing around on rock bottom. Um, it would surprise you to know that uh, there's a poll out that shows that if the gubernatorial election were held today, Verge Bernero would lead Rick Snyder by two points? Uh, no, it doesn't surprise me. You know, I, I like what Snyder's doing. Do. I really do. I think the guy's, uh, he's, you know, he, he's got some guts, and I think he's sticking to his guns, and I'm, in fact, I've been looking for his address, his email address, so I could <laughs> send him a little note and tell him, uh, you know, just keep it up. I don't, you know, I'm a senior, uh, a well senior. I just uh, turned past my 80th year, and, uh, you know, I don't mind paying a little taxes on uh, <laughs> uh, but well, on some of my income. I know. That probably won't be very popular with people, but, uh, you know, uh, I think the guy's doing a good job, and I'm, 
and maybe he should be even a little tougher. Well, hey, send us the note. We'll walk it down the street. He's right two doors down from us here on the Avenue of Michigan, right by the Capitol, and uh, the best wishes. It's great to hear your voice again. Who do you like tonight, the Heat or the Pistons? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy one. <laughs> I like the heat. <laughs> you can't stand the heat. Get out of the palace is yeah. what they're going to say tonight. Pete Waldmeyer, longtime columnist and Detroit watcher on the city that is shrinking, known as Detroit, the biggest city in the state of Michigan. Television viewers on Fox 47. Adios and Radio listeners, stay right where you are. There's another hour of your Wednesday with Michael Patrick Shields after the news. Yes, and all the moonshots, they call me Big Papa. When I throw pesos, then wait. Adios and via con Dios. A long way.